I think that to begin with, I thought that if you gave people freedom and gave them information to get started, they would sort of go, you know, like, like trains. I found that freedom didn't work, that people needed restrictions. And once you gave restrictions, and they were, if they were thoughtful restrictions, people pushed against them and began producing interesting work. I found that um, as a teacher, I was also a sort of a parent that um, as an old, someone older than the students, um, they relied on me for a sense of encouragement. I think as a teacher, your job is to make, is to make difficult, things difficult for your students and at the same time encourage them, show how you like them, show what you appreciate about them, um, recognize them as individuals. Uh, all of the kind of things that were missing from my own education. So I think my, my, um, the way in which I define being a teacher was very much in, um, in, in the, the converse of what I'd grown up with, where I was one of a number of kids in a big class and you got no individual attention at all. I think documentary is, is wonderful because you are chasing the mysteries of reality. What is real? What is actual? What is really going on? Um, over and over again, the surface is, conceals what is underneath. And I think as a documentary maker, you collect materials and then when you try to put the materials together, you begin to discover all the dimensions there are to human experience. And I, I always found documentary to be a sort of like a hunting expedition where you come back and only then would you discover what you what you got so it was always for me documentary making and the excitement of documentary making lay mostly in the cutting rooms it was the moment when I confronted what I had captured and um, figured out what it was I think a very great curiosity about the way the world works. I think you need to be curious, I, need, I think you need to be critical, I think you need to be ready to step in where other people are afraid to go. I think you want, as part of you wants to change the world, and you understand that that's difficult. It can be done with a documentary, probably more easily can you have an act, can you press upon society uh, through documentary than any other way? I mean, what do you need? You need a camera, you need a computer, and if you're ingenious, you can um, come back with material that shocks, surprises, outrages, hurts, touches uh, an audience. And um, so I, I see it as a medium that is immensely exciting and attractive but which requires a huge amount of persistence. You've got to be ready to, uh, to carry through a process which is arduous, long, very exacting, very rigorous, uh, particularly in the, in the post-production part of it. I think in, in shooting, I think you need a certain degree of courage you have to get beyond your shyness, your natural shyness, which I, was very difficult for me. I've, I felt continuously self-conscious and embarrassed by what I was doing. It took a long time to get over it. Sophisticated equipment is everywhere. You can make a film with a telephone. Um, and yet, I think you need, you still need the same conceptual skills. You need to be able to define what you're doing. Um, the equipment certainly makes things cheap. It makes things much, much easier. It makes things possible for anyone to make a documentary film. But I think you have to learn, if, you're to, if your film is to, is to um, grip people, I think you have to learn 
who your masters are, whose shoulders are you standing on. You have to learn um, the language of film, the language of the cinema, the traditions of documentary which have given us different kinds of genre so that you know what genre you're working in. Um, but you can, you can start anywhere. You, if you want to make a documentary, you just jump in and do it. And then you'd be, when you see what you've got on the screen, and when you see how the audience reacts to it, you begin to learn then what to do next. I believe very much in teaching yourself. I, I, I don't know that I'd, I'd go to film school. I'd spend the money on equipment and just do it. I'm a, a self-taught person. I didn't go to university or college or anything. So I believe very much it's a, it's a medium that you can learn just through doing it being exacting and doing it. Not strictly, I think it's much quicker to go to school. I think you have a community, you have equipment, you have guidance. But if you have no money and you're really determined, um, I meet people who just use my book and teach themselves to become filmmakers and you know, eventually win recognition. It's a long, hard road. But um, some people uh, don't do well in institutions. I wasn't someone who could do really handle institutions. I couldn't really bear being lectured at. I had to do things. I'm a person who learns through doing. I think film school is a good deal because you can, you can get the training and you can get the involvement and you can get the history, you can get the aesthetics all in a package. And it takes you a hell of a long time. It's taken me. 30 years or something to put things together for myself. I am in the position of walking into a course which has begun. I meet 23 people. They come from about 20 different countries. Um, I've been in a similar situation but with, with fewer countries and mostly European countries before. I think that um, it's a marvellous thing to have so many different cultures all working together. And I know from experience that those people, by the end of the two years, many of them will work together for the rest of their lives, even though they live in different countries. They will keep contact with each other, they will use each other, they will, they will use each other's crew. Um, you can't underestimate how relationships, how the importance of the relationships that people make in boot camp, which is what a film school is. You know what boot camp is? It's the uh, first stage of the military. Um, my impression is that they're extremely smart people. Um, they're, they're clever people, they're bright, they're thoughtful. They're, most of them, I think all of them are well educated. Um, some have come forward more readily than others. Um, the college itself, I have more of a shadowy idea. Uh, of the university, I have more of a shadowy idea because I've only seen really one, you know, the inside of one room. It seems to be very well equipped. Um, I think the students have among them sufficient expertise to be teaching each other which happens very much with uh, master's students, happens with undergraduate students too. They, are, they teach each other, they learn from each other, and uh, our job as teachers is to help them become comfortable with giving each other criticism, constructive criticism. I think uh, by the end of two years you will see some terrific films coming out. You will see a lot of terrific films, and I think that they will make films, they will probably go back to their own countries and they will make films that um, return through the festival circuit. We will be seeing, hearing from them and seeing their work in future. I'm asked from time to time, where can I study documentary? I've got a bachelor's degree. Where can I study documentary? And, and at the master's level, I, I can only recommend in America two or three programs. Um, in Europe, I don't know of any other 
I wouldn't know where to send people. I do now, but I wouldn't know where to send people for um, for documentary study at master's level. It's a really rare thing. I don't know why it's so rare. I suppose because there's a problem of people paying for it. Um, you need a you need a scholarship structure in order to attract people and get the critical mass you need to be able to teach. Thank you, Michael. You're very welcome. Thank you for being my interviewer when you are plainly vocally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>